Hi cozy friends, how are we this week? So you used to spend hours and hours in Sims, Genshin, Animal Crossing, whatever game it may be. And now it's been weeks, months, maybe even years since you picked it up. If that is at all relatable, I am here to help. <laughs> As the queen of fluctuating through different stages of my interest in gaming throughout my life, I've been through like obsession stages to just like not playing for years. I understand the struggle and I want to offer maybe some underlying reasons that you may be in a gaming rut or just some tips to help you get out of it. If you don't know me, I'm Kennedy, also known as Cozy Games or Cozy K on here, and I make videos about cozy gaming and lifestyle. I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on Twitch. For so many of us, gaming is a means to unwind, it's an act of self-care, it's a safe space, and it's a means of upkeeping your mental health. I actually just made a video of game recommendations that I recommend if you're in a mental health rut, and that does go to show how much gaming can impact your mental health, your emotions, your life, your routines. Because there are all these benefits of gaming, it is worth it to try and get out of a gaming rut if that's what you want. And to lose the tool of gaming can kind of be a scary place to be in, you know? Like if you really had this hobby that you really cared about and really gave you this kind of safe space, this peace of mind, to all of a sudden lose that, it feels a little directionless and purposeless. And you're looking around like, well, what do I do now? And I think when I'm in that state, I can tend to just turn to like TikTok and just kind of something that's a little more mind numbing. And while TikTok and things like that do serve its purpose, I'm not shaming, you know, those things because I do them too. But I find that it's not as fulfilling and it's not as mindful as maybe sitting down and making time to play through a game and, you know, experience a story. So now that we've covered kind of the context, let's get to the root of it. I think one of the overarching things we can all do and, and one of the underlying reasons that you may be in a gaming rut is re framing gaming. I think gaming can have a negative connotation for a lot of people. Gaming can hold a sense of internalized guilt from other people's view of what gaming is and what gaming means to you. I think in society as a whole, the narrative around gaming is it's bad and it's negative and it's violent and it's a waste of time and creates, you know, this obsessive in your parents' basement for hours kind of attitude around around life and gaming and, and it makes you kind of shut off healthy things in your life. While I think any activity can get to that extreme, I don't believe that gaming deserves kind of the reputation it's gotten in society. But unfortunately it has and unfortunately we as humans are susceptible to what other people tell us and what society is telling us and it's really hard for us to rid ourselves of those, you know, preconceived notions of gaming and those negative ideas ideas of gaming that other people are putting onto it. And so when we do spend time for ourselves and we do game and we do make time to like, you know, have a night of just gaming, you might walk away feeling guilty, even though it was something that you really enjoyed and it really brought you peace and happiness and joy because of this kind of external criticism of gaming, you're internalizing that. Now, luckily I grew up in a family that was very positive about gaming. And so I kind of didn't grow up with those ideas. I would hear people criticizing gaming and I would be like, they don't know what they're talking about because I know what gaming means for me. And so because I had that formative experience as a kid and really cementing what gaming was to me, I haven't experienced those kind of feelings of guilt and feelings of like wasting my time when I play a game. As much as I've heard other people in the community, I constantly get comments of like, how do you get past the guilt of it all? And I'm like, I'm so sorry that I can't provide a way that I've gotten through it because that was just not a journey that I had to get through myself. But I do think that if you're in a gaming rut, step back, zoom out, see if maybe you're internalizing certain narratives around gaming that make you feel guilty while you do it. And that's what's making you avoid it. Or it could be possible that you're also getting into these kind of binge perk cycles of gaming where you get really obsessed with it and then you feel such an overwhelming sense of guilt for doing that, that you don't play it for a month. And then because you miss it and it's something that's important to you and you 
love it, you come back and you just binge it because you're like, ah, I'm, I feel guilty about it, but you know, who cares? And just binging, binging, binging on, on gaming. You can form a more healthy, more balanced relationship with gaming if you rid yourself of the feelings of guilt. So I think that's something to just like reflect on. That's something maybe you can journal about. Maybe you can be intentional about and just kind of schedule, you know, an hour or so of gaming and afterwards really think about how positive of an experience it was for you instead of focusing on the guilt or focusing on the fact that it's wasting time. You know, I like to think of it as a hobby, just like anything else. You know, you don't feel guilty about sitting and reading a book. I think just reframing it in your head and, and kind of retraining yourself will really rid yourself of that underlying guilt around gaming and just reframe gaming and what it means to you in general. The next one is a little more complicated and it's mental health. So I like to think of this kind of as Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, the pyramid of if you don't have these basic foundational needs, you're not gonna be able to address these other ones on top. And mental health is really towards the bottom. That's kind of the base. If you're not where you can be functional and you're not where you wanna be with your mental health, it's gonna be difficult to find joy and make time for hobbies that you used to find enjoyable and make time for. So for this, I don't really have professional uh, advice on how to address mental health. I talked a little bit in, in the video that I talked about before about like sometimes gaming can help you pull yourself out of a mental health rut. And so if that can help you maybe watch that video. Other than that, it is such a deeply personal experience, you know, like whether it's medication, whether it's therapy, whether it's exercise, whether it's rest, like there are so many things that could affect your mental health and improve it or not. And that is such a deeply personal thing that I don't wanna give any advice on that. But I just wanna point out that mental health definitely could be a contributing factor to not finding joy in your hobbies anymore. And that's a very real thing. And it's a valid thing and you shouldn't feel guilty about it. You shouldn't feel like it's gonna be this way forever. I'm never gonna find joy in my hobbies again. No, that's not gonna be the case. Know that that'll be there for you in the future. Think of it as like a treat. <laughs> Think of it as a reward. It's like a reward at the end of this mental health journey that you're going through. And know that when you do start to feel that like tingle of joy and interest in gaming again, that you're close to the other side and that's something that's very beautiful. The next thing is maybe you need a break. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you just simply need a break from gaming. Maybe you do spend a lot of time gaming and you're like, it's kind of not a novel thing anymore to you. It's not something that is new and exciting. Maybe you just simply need a break. I think that was the case for me with Animal Crossing. I needed a break. I needed to stop playing that game. And I was kind of beating myself up for not finding joy in it anymore and not playing it daily, but I had burnt myself out on the game from playing it for hours and hours and hours during that time of the year, I needed a break. And I think if you are feeling like you're in a gaming rut, whether it's with a specific game or just gaming in general, it could be a combination of all of the things I'm talking about in this video, but this is definitely one of them. Step back, reevaluate and be like, maybe I just burnt myself out on this game. Maybe I burnt myself out on gaming in general and maybe I need to look into other hobbies for a little bit or just other types of games, right? And this kind of links back into what I talked about in the reframing portion, which which is if you do create kind of a healthy balance of your life and gaming, so where you're not going on like binges of gaming and then feeling guilty and like avoiding gaming and then going on the cycle again, if you're in that you're avoiding it, you do need a break. You know, you do need that break and you need to give yourself that break. But I think instead of continuing on the cycle, what you should do is kind of craft a more healthy schedule and approach to gaming in the future. If you do need other hobbies, I have an Amazon link. And you know, if you want to help your girl out, I do get a commission for anything on that list. If you don't want to give me a commission, you can just like pull up the list and then search it up on another tab. You don't have to, you know, use my links. But I am so passionate about the fact that hobbies makes you feel fulfilled and hobbies makes you feel whole and it makes you feel excited about life and it gives you a break from you know the humdrum of life so I I have collected kind of all of these different things that you could get into and this is these are very like consumerist you buy something and then it's your hobby there are so many hobbies that don't require you to buy something but this is just my list of kind of like easy to approach you buy a kind of cheap thing and it makes you feel happy that's that if you just simply need a new hobby look into that the next 
possible underlying issue is you don't have enough time. And this is my issue. I nowadays kind of only game because I have a full-time job and because I do content creation. I kind of had two full-time jobs, right? I really don't have time to game for my own personal enjoyment. So the only times I have to game are when I'm creating content. And for me, that works. I'm okay with that for now. But I have at times felt like, dang, I kind of am in a gaming rut. I haven't finished a game in a long time. I haven't started a new game in a long time because I just simply don't have the time. And I like to think of the meditation quote that's like, if you don't have five minutes to meditate, that means you absolutely need to make five minutes to meditate. I kind of think the same thing about gaming. Like if you don't have an hour, you know, just an hour or let's say 30 minutes. If you don't have just like 30 minutes to sit down and like do your dailies in a certain game, maybe look at your schedule. Maybe look at your schedule and try to optimize it a little bit because gaming can be replaced with like anything that matters to you, right? Like it doesn't have to be gaming. If you don't have 30 minutes of like you time a day, it's time to look at your schedule. It's time to optimize something. It's time to take out something that isn't serving you, whether that's like sitting on the toilet on TikTok for 30 minutes anything that's kind of more of a waste of time. Just look at your schedule and say, do I have 30 minutes of me time? If you want to spend that gaming, perfect. That might help you get out of a gaming rut. It might help you actually spend some time doing something that you like doing. A quick one that I see more so in the gaming community, like gaming creators, is comparison to others. And this was especially true in Animal Crossing, and I'm seeing it a little bit in like Disney Dreamlight Valley community. And that is just, you get so discouraged from comparing yourself to others and I'm sure maybe this happens in like League of Legends or like more competitive games. If you're comparing yourself to others to the point where you are not finding joy in the game anymore, you know it is time to step back. Step back, say I'm playing this game for fun. I do this for fun. I do this for personal enjoyment. I should not be comparing myself to others. Others are playing the game at their own speed for their own reasons. I need to do the same. I need to focus on myself and if it helps like unfollow people, don't consume content Content that makes you feel that way, you know, like be intentional about what you're consuming and what's making you feel that way and what's making you compare yourself to others. That's just a quick one because I know it doesn't apply to most people who are kind of like playing solo games by themselves, but don't suck the joy out of something. And this kind of goes for any hobby. Don't suck the joy out of it because you're comparing yourself to others. Really connect with the reason why you enjoyed that hobby in the first place. And the last tip is trying a different game. I mean, like really going outside of your comfort zone, going outside of what you're used to. Some of the favorite games I've ever had and I've ever tried in the past two years are games that I just tried on a whim. I was like, I don't think I like this. Everything in me says this is not the game for me. And I tried it and I loved it. And it's one of my favorite games. I would say like Breath of the Wild is one of those games for me. Borderlands is one of those games for me. And there's there's a lot of like story-based games, like even Night in the Woods. I didn't really like story-based games when I tried Night in the Woods. And then I tried Night in the Woods. I was like, wait, there's something here. Little Nightmares. I hated horror games, scary games. I loved that game. Just creating novelty in the hobby in general and gaming in general by trying a new game definitely will help you get out of your gaming rut. Also, if you want to try switching up and creating novelty in the game. Like maybe if you're a one game person, if you're a Sims person, I know Sims people go through the biggest waves of playing and not playing, but try switching up how you play the game. Maybe if you're a creative Sim person, try some building. Also, if you know that you're kind of like a one game person, see what you like about that game. Like for example, again, Sims, if you like the building of Sims, go see if there's a building simulator, if there's a design simulator, like house flippers, for example, you might really like it because it has the same mechanic. If you like create a sim, look for like fashion games. There's so many games out there and so many games that you could potentially like and could potentially get you out of this little rut that you're in. And it's really just about creating novelty. Another type of game for me that really helps bring me out of a gaming rut is social games. This is not like online competitive games. This is like getting your friends together and playing like Jackbox games or Gartic phone, like something that's so social and fun. And it's still kind of lighting that fire of passion that you have for gaming, but it's in this social way and you don't feel like you're, you know, neglecting your friends or you, you kind of get a two for one. You're spending time with people that you care about. You're getting that social element in the Maslow hierarchy of need, but you're also making time for your hobbies that you care about. So those are my tips for getting out of a gaming rut, y'all. I also just want to emphasize that it's not a bad thing to be in a gaming rut. Like it's not a, an inherently negative thing to just not want to pick up a 
game. Like that's not a like, no, no, you should be playing games as much as possible. No, if you are not feeling it, you're not feeling it. And that kind of goes in line with it. You, maybe you just need a break. And so this is just if gaming or any hobby is really important to you and you're kind of just sad that you're not finding the joy in it anymore, that you're not making time for it. That's what this is for, right? This is not to like shame you for not playing games. It's okay to not play games. If you all have any thoughts or you have any advice, please share it in the comments. I would love to hear and I know others would too. Know that it's okay to go through waves of interests. So many factors in our exterior lives and internal emotions and everything are constantly changing. And so it only makes sense that our hobbies and our interests are changing along with that. We absolutely cannot expect our needs from our hobbies or within our hobbies to remain like unchanging. They're gonna change and it's fine. <laughs> Definitely give yourself grace, but also listen to your patterns, listen to yourself, listen to your emotions and kind of use these tools to pinpoint like what it really is that is keeping you from doing what you love. Overall, gaming is meant to be a fun release from life, okay? So let's keep it that way. I love you, stay cozy, bye. <laughs>